Let's talk about parallel and perpendicular lines. This is a two-day lesson, and we're on day one right now, and we're going to talk about the slopes of parallel and perpendicular lines today. So let's first review what are parallel lines. They're lines that never intersect. Lines are parallel if and only if they have the same slope. So I want you to look at these graphs on the right. In this first graph, and I'm going to zoom in here, in this first graph, I have the graph of 2x plus 1, y equals 2x plus 1, and y equals 2x minus 3. So as you can see, in this red graph, or the line that is red, my y-intercept is 1, and my slope is rise to run 1. It's 2 over 1. That's my constant rate of change. And then in this blue line, my y-intercept is at negative 3, and my slope is still up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. It's still 2. So because both of these lines have that same constant rate of change, but different y-intercepts, they will never, ever, ever intersect. And the same thing goes for the graph on the right. It's just another example to show you that they both have the, a slope of negative 1 half, and because they have the same constant rate of change, but different y-intercepts, they will never ever intersect. They are parallel. So now let's move on to perpendicular lines. What are perpendicular lines? Perpendicular lines are lines that do intersect, but they intersect at 90 degrees. They have angles, they create angles of 90 degrees. So lines are perpendicular if and only if the product of their slopes is negative one. And remember, product, that is, let me highlight that, product is an answer to a multiplication problem. So if I multiply their slopes, I should get negative one. This means their slopes must be opposite reciprocals. Okay, so two things going on, opposite and their reciprocals. So let's look at these graphs and I'm gonna zoom in again. This blue graph, that represents the line of y equals 2x plus 1. So I have a y-intercept of 1, and my slope is 2, rise to run 1. This other slope, or I'm sorry, this other graph, the, the red graph, the equation is y equals negative 1 half x minus 2. So I have a different y-intercept. That's fine. But my slope is negative, and then the reciprocal of 2, if you put that over 1 and then you flip it, that's the reciprocal of 2. So the opposite reciprocal would be negative, flip it, 1 over 2. So my slopes have a special relationship. They're opposite reciprocals. And then if I take them, 2, and I multiply it by negative 1 half, I should get, and if I want to do that, I can do that, 2 over 1 times negative 1 half, I'll get negative 1. So the product of their slopes is negative 1, and they intersect at 90 degrees. And then in this graph on the right, I just wanted to point out that if you have a horizontal line, so y equals a constant, y equals negative 2, and then a vertical line, x equals a constant, x equals negative 3, they will obviously intersect at 90 degree angles, so they are perpendicular lines. So first, let's practice... Um, figuring out the opposite re reciprocals of some of these numbers. So I have four examples here, and we're going to go through and figure out the opposite reciprocal for each one. So opposite, if it's negative, the opposite of that is positive. If it's positive, the opposite of that is negative. And then reciprocal, I'm going to take that fraction and flip it. So what is the opposite reciprocal of two-thirds? Opposite would be negative. Reciprocal would be 3 over 2. Number 2. If you want, could you put that over 1? Sure, that helps a lot of students when they think about flipping that, that numerator and denominator. So opposite of 4, or opposite of positive, would be negative. And then the reciprocal of that would be 1 over 4. What about number 3? That's 1 over 1. Well, the opposite of negative, it's going to be positive. And then if I flip 1 over 1, it's just 1. So that's really special. So the 
line, the slope of the line that would be perpendicular to a line with the slope of negative one would be one that has a slope of positive one. Let's look at number four, opposite reciprocal. It's gotta satisfy both of those requirements. Opposite would be negative, reciprocal would be eight over five. So let's move on to five, six, and seven. All we're gonna do is determine if the following are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. They don't have any kind of special relationship they're just lines that will intersect at some point. So number five, I love this one because it's in slope intercept form. So I can easily identify the slope. It's the number in front of the X. Y intercept is over here all, all by itself. So because I'm looking, the slopes of lines are the indicator to tell me if they're parallel or perpendicular. I'm looking at the coefficient of x, the number in front of the x, when it's in this form right here. So this first equation, y equals 1 half x plus 2, and the second one is y equals 1 half x minus 5, those slopes are the same, which means they are parallel. And I'm actually gonna put a symbol there. That symbol means parallel. If you wanna write that down. I love math because I can just, you could just write these two lines right here. It means parallel and I'm sure your teacher will, will accept it. Number three, y equals three x plus three and y equals negative one third x minus one. They're not the same slope, so they're obviously not parallel. So the next thing I'm looking at is, are they opposite reciprocals of one another? Well, remember I can put three over one because one is positive and one is negative. That satisfies the opposite requirement because this one is three over one and this one is one over three. We know they are perpendicular. And that's the symbol for perpendicular. And if you wanna just write the symbol, that's fine. And let's look at number seven. Number seven. So these equations are in standard form. You might quickly know how to just see the slope of these two lines. Um, I'm going to show you, we're gonna convert number, or I'm sorry, this one right here, to slope intercept form, and then we're gonna see if we can quickly identify the slope in this second equation. So remember, I want my lines to be in this format when I'm graphing or anything like that because I can easily identify the slope and the y-intercept. So let's solve for y in this first equation here. So the first thing I wanna do is move this X term over to the right side. And I get two Y equals negative three X plus five. And then divide by two, what gets divided by two? Everything, negative three over two X plus, and I'm just gonna leave it as five over two because I really don't care about that Y intercept right now anyways, it's just 2.5, but my slope is negative three over two. So if I look at this problem, I can see in my standard format, I have a three here and a two here, but my slope down here is negative. Okay, so I put this A over B and I made it opposite of what that is. So let's see if that holds true for the, the one on the right. If that holds true, opposite A over B, then what would this one be? two over three, and the opposite of that would be positive because that's a negative three. But let's go ahead and convert to slope intercept form because that's a really good skill that you need to know. And practice makes perfect. So I'm gonna subtract two X, negative three Y equals negative two X plus nine. Then what do I do? Divide by negative three, everything gets divided by negative three, and I'm left with Y equals, two thirds X minus three. And I can see my slope in this one is positive two thirds. And that's what that gave us. Opposite of A over B from standard form is your slope. So now the question becomes, what's the relationship between the slopes? Are they the same? No. Are they opposite? Well, this one's negative and this one's positive. Are they reciprocals? This one's three over two and this one's two over three. They are, it satisfies both requirements, therefore 
these lines are perpendicular. So let's move on to our final two problems for this set of notes. Number eight and nine, it says determine if the following are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So let's look at number eight. A line with a slope of negative three and a line that contains the points two, four, and five, five. So a line with a slope of negative three. So we've got one line that has a slope of negative three, and then we know the other line contains these two points. Well, I'm looking for the slope, so what am I gonna use? The slope formula. Y2 minus Y1, so I'm gonna subtract my Y's, and if you want, you know what, I'll go ahead and I'll write X1, Y1, X2, Y2, five minus four, Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, five minus two, and I get one, over three. What's the relationship? Are they opposite reciprocals? Yes, they are. These two lines are perpendicular. Number nine, a line that contains the points negative three, one, and four, three, and a line that contains the points one, five, and three, twelve. Well, this looks like we're going to have to use the slope formula on both of these. So, in this first set right here, three minus one over four minus negative three. Remember, and four minus negative three is the same as four plus three, and I get two over seven. That's that first line. So now let's look for the equation or the slope in the second line. 12 minus five over three minus one. 12 minus five is seven, and three minus one is two. So what are these? Well, remember, it has to satisfy both requirements, opposite reciprocal, to be perpendicular. Are they opposite? No, they're both positive. Even though this one is two over seven, and this one over here is seven over two, that does not mean that they are perpendicular lines. It has to satisfy both requirements. This is an example where they're neither. They're obviously not the same, so they're not parallel, and they're not opposite reciprocals, therefore it's also not, they're also not perpendicular. And that concludes your notes over day one, parallel and perpendicular lines. I hope it was helpful.